Good morning, everyone. It is January 24th, and this is the third of three announcements about our annual budget meeting. Our bylaws require an annual meeting in late January to approve a budget for the forthcoming year. Church Council has decided this year to hold the meeting remotely on January 31st. By remotely, of course, I mean that we're not going to hold the budget meeting here in the church. Instead, we will uh, hold the meeting by email and regular mail. That is because Council has decided, uh, pursuant to a bylaw amendment that we approved last July, that because of the pandemic, extraordinary circumstances exist, and that justifies holding the meeting remotely. So, by now, you should have received from us, uh, by email or regular mail, a proposed budget for your consideration and four proposed bylaw amendments. Now, you never have to leave home to vote on these items. You can simply reply to the email with your votes, or you can reply by regular mail, or you can drop off your written answer uh, at the church mailbox. As long as you do that by January 31st, as long as your mailing is postmarked by January 31st, your vote will be counted. We will include these instructions in the mailing to you. Thank you. Good morning, church. Our video today is for Sunday, January the 24th, and our readings come from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 7, verses 29 through 31, and the Gospel of Mark, the very first chapter, verses 14 through 20. There are no additional announcements this morning. And so let us take a moment to silence our hearts and our souls to prepare ourselves in worship to hear where God might be calling us or nudging us in a certain direction before we begin our opening prayer. And join me if you have the prayer in front of you. Our souls wait in silence for you, O Lord, but our minds too often race from one thought to another. Help us find silence and peace in our hearts and minds and souls. You alone are our rock and salvation. You alone are the fortress of our faith and we shall not be shaken as long as we rest in holy silence awaiting your call. We will trust you in all seasons, holy God, in pandemic and social unrest and economic struggle. We will put our confidence in you and live in your ways. We will shun extortion and vain hopes and rest in you and your steadfast love. Hear us as we raise our voices in worship this morning and pray as one church in the words which Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Today's first reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29 through 31. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. Our gospel this morning comes from the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
it was an average normal day. Simon and Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They rose at early light like any other day. They would fish while the fishing was good and then row back to shore and fix the nets for another day. Day in and day out, the routine was the same. Cast out their nets, pull in the fish, and mend the nets. Cast out their nets, pull in the fish, and mend the nets. It might be a tad boring, but stable and predictable. It's really no different than our own lives. We all do what we can to pay the rent, put food on the table, and care for ourselves and those who count on us. We get up, we shower, and we fill our days with the routine of life. Those routines may have been upended with the pandemic, but still, we cast out our nets, pull in the fish, and mend our nets day in and day out. And then Jesus shows up. Follow me, he says. What always strikes me is how immediate Simon and Andrew's response. They just leave everything sitting there. They don't even call home to say they will be late for dinner. They drop everything and follow Jesus. I took a very unscientific poll with my Facebook friends. I asked them, if you are a Christian, then what does it mean to you to follow Jesus? What are the concrete actions or values or mindsets that a Christian should hold? I got a lot of responses. The top three answers, all tied in how often they were mentioned, are as follows. Number one, love God and love others. This encompasses all the law. Number two, do unto others as you would have them do unto you usually attached with the example of Matthew, the 25th chapter. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink, etc., etc. And number three, humility. Not thinking less of ourselves, but thinking of ourselves less. Other responses included peace, honesty and integrity, kindness, generosity, obedience to scripture, justice, forgiveness, and patience, to name just a few. It was a pretty impressive list. What I found interesting is that not one person pulled out the admonition to love our enemies, to do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, or pray for those who mistreat you. Hmm. Although, I guess there could be an argument that it falls under the umbrella of loving others. As I pondered this list, the thought crossed my mind of how the world would be a vastly different place if all Christians actually live this way. We could bring God's reign of peace and compassion to earth if we actually followed Jesus in all that we do. So I have a challenge for you. Given this list I've shared, 
or anything you might add. What net do you need to drop and abandon so you can follow Jesus? Let me explain. The disciples couldn't bring their nets with them. It would only have dragged them down. What is dragging you down and keeping you from following Jesus? Do you need to drop the net of anger and control and practice patience and silence and understanding? Do you need to drop the net of consumerism and practice giving to others in need? Do you need to drop the net of retribution and judgment and maybe even arrogance and treat others as you would want to be treated, seeing them as equal to you? You see, the thing is, Jesus still comes to disrupt our daily lives in order to show us a new way to live, a better way that is built on love, compassion, justice, and forgiveness. But too often, we hold on to our nets with both hands, gripping a way of life that no longer works for us or God believes does not serve us. One of the answers I received made me smile, and I quote, willing to be interrupted by God. And that's what the immediacy is all about. Are we even willing to allow God to disrupt our well-ordered lives? Or does God need to take a number and wait until we have time that we quite frankly are not promised? Are we willing to pull over a lane and be a few minutes late in order to give a couple of dollars to the person at the corner? Are we willing to place a phone call to someone grieving and risk stumbling over our words? Are we willing to listen to and believe those on the margins when they tell us what they need in order to just live with common dignity? So far, I have talked about God calling us as individuals. But are we willing to be called as a church, a community of believers to live differently? Most church communities are notorious for living in the past. If anyone holds on to our nets with both hands and is unwilling to allow God to call us to live differently, it's the church. And with less excuse. What nets might God be calling First Congregational Church of Royal Oak to drop and leave on the shoreline? Paul understood this sense of urgency. The appointed time has grown short, he writes. Stop living as though you have tomorrow, as the old world is passing away and a new one is coming to take its place. And we, we get to bring it to fruition. Repent and believe in the good news. The kingdom of God has come near. Jesus is calling us. Follow me. You have been called to bring 
this good news into the lives, lives of all those you interact with every day. Are your nets keeping you from doing that? Drop your nets. God is with us. God has called us beyond our day-to-day -day ordinary lives to live as though God's reign is here among us because it is. And we have much to do. Amen. I heard there was a secret chord David played, please the Lord, but you don't really care for music, do you? It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major live, the baffled king, composing
did my best It wasn't much I couldn't feel So I learned to touch I've told the truth I didn't come to fool you And even though It all went wrong I'll stand right here Before the Lord of song With nothing on my tongue But hallelujah 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 Let us continue our prayer. You call our names, O God, in the midst of our day and ask us to follow you. You ask us to leave the comforts we have come to rely upon for an unknown path. Sometimes we readily drop our nets and follow you in anxious anticipation. Other times we count the cost and find it is too much for us. Yet, you more than anyone know that life is uncertain and brings us challenges and joys that we could not dream we would encounter. Help us to trust in your call and rest in silent understanding that you are our rock and our salvation. We thank you for the smallest joys in our lives and know you stand with us even in the midst of our greatest sorrows. This week, we thank you for another peaceful transition of power in our nation and ask that your wisdom would descend upon all who serve this country. We continue to hold in our hearts those who are hurting, those who are fearful, those who feel the pain of injustice, those who are grieving, and all those who stand against this virus on the front lines. Give us all the courage to drop our nets and truly live in the footsteps of your son, Jesus. And so together we do pray. Hear the cries of your people, O Lord, our help is in you, creator of all heaven and earth. Bend your ear to us and grant us the desires of our heart. May your spirit be with us all and your son bring mercy to our world. Amen.
as you go about the coming week. I pray the Spirit will give you a soul that listens for the whispers of God. May you have the courage to answer the call of Jesus to follow in his footsteps and extend a hand to all in compassion and love. And may God be your rock and fortress in every season as you leave your nets and proclaim God's reign. Resurrection is our hope and new life is our call. The kingdom of God is at hand. May God's blessings continue to be with us all. Remember that God loves you as do I. Be safe, church. God willing, we will see you again next week via YouTube. Let the church say, Amen. Thank you.